Welcome to the video tutorial for the Allen cell structure segmenter. In this video, we are going to review how to use our Python-based toolkit to segment 3D fluorescent microscopy images, combining classic image segmentation with deep learning. This picture is an overview of our toolkit. More details can be found in our bioarchive paper. In this tutorial, we're going to be focusing on an iterative deep learning workflow. This tool is open source, and you can find all the code and documentation on GitHub. To use the deep learning part of this package, we assume an NVIDIA GPU has been set up properly on a Linux operating system. Make sure to follow the installation instructions on our GitHub page to set this up before starting. Running the segmenter relies on three building blocks, the binarizer, curator, and trainer. We'll explain how to use each building block in a real example. Today we're going to be applying these tools to segmenting Lamin B1 cells and all of the sample data that's available, or that's being used in this demo, will be accessible on our web page. We'll start by just looking at some examples of the images that we're going to segment. So on the right, you can see an example of the final segmentation that we'll be able to get by combining these classic approaches with machine learning. Here you can see a mitotic cell, and here you can see some interface cells. Morphologically, Lamin B1 can be very different depending on the cell state. As a starting point for our machine learning, we'll use a classic image segmentation workflow that's effective at segmenting interface cells. Then we'll improve performance of that segmentation algorithm by applying a deep learning approach. Then we'll combine those results from the first deep learning model and a segmentation from another classic image segmentation workflow that's been optimized for mitotic cells to train a second deep learning model, which will pick up both uh, interface and mitotic LAM and B1 cells. For the sake of simplicity, we're going to assume that we've already worked out our classic segmentation workflow. We have a separate video tutorial on our website to show you how to build a classic segmentation workflow in general. So we're going to be able to begin this demonstration by just running our classic segmentation workflow from the command line. So we're going to type in the appropriate um, set of commands to activate our toolkit and then we're going to batch process a set of images applying that Lamin B1 interface workflow, which you can see the commands being typed out here. Here, we're creating a new folder to save the segmentation result. Then we can copy the file path into the command line. For the index of the structure channel, since we're running on single channel images and Python is zero based, the structure channel parameter should be zero. Then we want to run the segmentation in a per directory mode, namely segmenting all images of a certain type in a specific folder. We need to specify the input path and we want to process all TIFF files in that folder. This step will usually take just a few minutes to run depending on the number and size of your images. Okay, now the results are ready. We can open two of them to look at and also we'll open their corresponding original images. And what you can see is that actually, at a first look, these images look actually pretty reasonable. Um, we can see that many of the nuclei have been segmented correctly with just a few exceptions in some of the images. But there's definitely a few places where we would really expect to be picking up cells where we're not. Um, so even some of the interface cells are not segmented correctly. So these failures in the seeding step cannot be easily fixed by tuning parameters. So we hope to be able to improve that with deep lear learning. So our next step is to create a proper training set by curating the current results and use this curated data to train a deep learning model so that we can hopefully pick up Lamin B1 signals in every single interface cell. So we'll use the sorting curator to go through images and pick images that have good segmentation. If one image is almost segmented well with just a small area which is not good, the curator will allow us to keep it as a good segmentation and just exclude the small failed area from the training process. 
We call this an excluding mask, which you'll see us typing into the command line shortly. Um, you can find more details about all of this in our documentation on our GitHub page. We want to emphasize that the interface for doing the curation in this demo is a default version and can be easily customized. We encourage users to read through our documentation about the curator on the GitHub page. We'll come back to this topic after we've done our first set of curation. We will start the curation process by specifying the path to the raw data and the segmentations. and then the path for saving the excluding mask and the training data generated after the curation. All of the images are a single channel, so we're going to set the input channel to be zero, and all of these are TIFF files. We'll use a CSV to keep track of the curating process, which would allow us to quit and resume the sorting process. Finally, we're going to set the normalization parameter. You can find all the details about normalization on our GitHub page. Here, we're just going to use the index of 10. Once we've got that command all set up, we can actually start the sorting curation steps. An interface will pop up which shows you specified slices and a max projection. So we're going to use a left click to identify bad images and a right click for good segmentations. In this image, this kind of elongated cell is missing in the segmentation. So we're going to left click and annotate this as a bad image. In contrast, the segmentation of this image looks very good. There's only one minor issue. So we want to say this segmentation is good, but we're going to exclude the small area in the corner. So we're going to go ahead and right click on that, say that it's good, and then when the curator asks if we need an excluding mask, we'll say yes. So now we're going to go through and we're going to annotate, again, just that small area in the corner as being good. So we'll use a left click to actually draw our polygon shape. And we're going to do that in the leftmost image. Then we'll right click to close our polygon. And then uh, we're done, so we're going to press D. So now we'll resume the segmentation. Again, here we're missing a cell, so we're going to annotate that as bad. And then again, we have a few missing cells um, in this image, so we're also going to annotate this image as being bad. Because in our data we have many examples of very well-segmented fields, we're eliminating fields which have even one cell missing. However, if the segmentation is less perfect, we could keep more of these fields and use the excluding masks to ignore only the failing areas with the goal of being able to include more training data. So for the sake of the demo, we'll fast forward a little bit, but once we've got all of our sorting finished, we can open up our CSV and look at kind of what that structure looks like. And you can see what the scores for each of those images are, as well as where any masks that were generated. In this folder, you can see the actual files that are automatically generated after curation and will be used to train the model. For most of the cases, users don't need to worry about what these files are. The interface we just used for curation is implemented using very simple tools for stability across different platforms. We will investigate more advanced tools for more functionality without sacrificing stability. From human-computer interaction perspectives, the interface is easily customizable. We encourage users to check out our GitHub documentation. For example, if you prefer to draw the mask on the max intensity projection, you can easily, easily switch the order of the displayed pictures, or you can choose to display the results that are most suitable for looking at your structure. So once we've annotated all of our training data that we're going to use to make a new model for segmenting interface cells, the most important thing that we need to do next is set up the YAML file that will determine how we do the training. So we're going to start by just making a new folder um, where we're going to put our YAML files and get those set up. And then we can go ahead and copy the YAML files out of the um, repo that we've uh, cloned from GitHub onto our local machine. So then we're going to open and edit that train config YAML file. So there are a few parameters that need to either get changed or at least checked for every run. So we can see a lot of information about how this all gets set up um, on our GitHub page, but we're going to kind of walk through that process right now. So we're going to start by just setting um, the folder paths for the data that we want to use and where the model should be saved to. 
So here we're just going to set up um, where the checkpoint directory is, so where the model should be saved out as it's training. Uh, so we'll go and just make sure that that folder exists, and we're going to go ahead and make that folder now. Uh, then we're going to check um, where we're actually going to put, uh, where we're going to get the training data from, so that's already all set up in our YAML file. And then last we're going to check uh, the location for the file path, so we're all good there. So next we're going to um, go ahead and change some settings that need to be specified for your specific training task. So we're going to use a unit, xy, but you can see a lot more details about this on our GitHub page. For the number of epochs, um, we currently have this set to 400, that's fine for our training problem. And then um, again, there's a set of parameters that we need to check that are based on what computer you're actually running this on. Um, so you can see uh, one of the parameters that we want to check is the patch size. So we're going to check the GPU memory size of our machine. Um, and so for us, that's this NVIDIA SMI. So about 12 gigabytes. So for a unit training on a 12 gig GPU, um, we have these different parameters that we want to adjust the size in, the size out, and the batch size. So we'll start by just checking our size in. And so here we're going to just copy and paste those values that we're suggesting. Um, same thing for the size out. We'll copy and paste that into our YAML file directly. And then last, we will also check our batch size and what that should be. So here we're going to have a batch size of 4. And so again, we'll just find that spot, check that that's correct in our YAML file. So here we've checked almost everything that we want to have that YAML file contain. Um, so there's one more thing that we'll check quickly, which is the patch per buffer. Um, so this is related to the amount of training data that we actually have. So we have 11 images in our data set, so we'll save one per validation. So as the patch per buffer, we can use uh, about 200 for this training set, but again, you can find more documentation about how we got to that number um, in our documentation. So now we're ready to actually go into our terminal and uh, run the training itself. So this training um, can actually take up to 36 hours or potentially even longer if you have a big data set. So you may want to set it up overnight and just let it run while you're not at work. So the next day we'll come back and we'll have our model saved out um, and ready for us to take a look at. So once the training is done, we can go in and we can actually look at where our different model epochs are. And we can go ahead, we're going to use that kind of last epoch as a test to see how much better our newly trained model is working. Now we're going to copy one image that is not used in the training to test how the model works and how much improvement we actually get. We can save it to a test folder, and we'll also copy and paste its segmentation that we got from the classic workflow in the first step. Now we're ready to test the model. And so we're going to do that in a way that's pretty similar to how we set up the machine learning. So we're going to use a YAML file, and we're going to go through the same set of steps to kind of configure that YAML file uh, to actually run that segmentation on some test data. So uh, for this, we can go ahead and we can open um, a predict file YAML. Um, and so that's what we're going to go through and, and make some changes to. So again, <coughs> here we're going to go in and we're going to give uh, the name, the file path of where the model is that we actually want to use. We are correcting the model name. So we're going to also set an output directory so that we know where those segmentation images are going to get saved out.
and then we're also going to put in the directory of the input file that we want to use um, as a test image. So before we actually run the binarizer, we're just going to check that the settings for the size in of the patches and the size out um, actually do match our training configuration. Um, so it looks like these actually don't match, so we'll go ahead and just copy and paste um, from that training config file um, and make sure that those are set to be the same. In addition, it's worth mentioning some specifics about the threshold value. The actual deep learning model output is an image in which each pixel has a value between 0 and 1, which represents the probability of that pixel belonging to our target object. We need a threshold value to convert that result into a binary image. So although 0.5 usually works well, if we set the threshold at minus 1, that will save the actual model output. And so that'll allow us to open the images in Fiji or image J and look at what a proper cutoff value would be. So we're going to use that minus 1 value on this test. So you can see a lot more about how that works um, and the details of that on our documentation page. Um, we have a lot more details about how you should set your threshold and what you should think about there. So now the configuration file, oh sorry, so we're going to change that threshold to minus 1 and save it. And so now the configuration file is ready to go. And so we can go back to our command line and we can easily apply um, this model uh, to our data. So we're going to go ahead and run, run this command. So again, here we're going to go and pull out um, the path. And then very shortly thereafter, we'll be able to go ahead and actually look at what some of the results. Now let's open the results and the original image. So if you look at the original image on the left and then compare it to the segmentation, um, we can have both of those images open and kind of take a look. So here we can adjust the threshold, and so that would correspond to what that threshold is set to um, in our YAML file. And if you look at how we're adjusting this threshold, it seems like 0.3 is going to come out to be kind of a reasonable uh, threshold value. and so. What we can see here is that, indeed, um, our model is performing pretty well. We're picking up really all of the interface cells. But what I think you can also see is if you look at those cells kind of in the center of the image that are mitotic, uh, the model isn't doing quite as well at picking those up. So we still need to improve that segmentation of those mitotic cells a little bit. So in the next step, we're going to do one more iteration with a deep learning model. Um, so our first model can do a pretty good job of segmenting LAM and V1 in interphase, but we can develop a separate classic segmentation workflow that gives us a better segmentation for LAM and V1 in mitotic cells. And then we'll merge those two versions in the merging curator to gener generate a unified ground truth to train a new model. For demonstration purposes, we've pre-collected a set of images where each image has at least one mitotic cell. More specifically, we'll run two binarizers, one with the first deep learning model and the other with a classic segmentation workflow specifically for mitotic lamin. Then we'll use a merging curator to draw a mask to make a merged ground truth which can be used to train the second deep learning model. So now we're going to get some folders set up. So we're going to have one folder where we're going to save the results of applying the classic segmentation workflow that's been optimized for mitotic cells. Uh, so that's the folder that we're making right now, this classic segmentation version. And then we're going to make a second version where we're going to save the outputs of applying the model that we previously trained to the new data set where each image has at least one mitotic cell. Um, so that's going to be our deep learning segmentation. So once we've got those folders set up, we're ready to start actually um, using them and putting some segmentation results into them. So we're going to go back over to our command line. And so we're going to go ahead and get our command set up. So we're going to do that batch workflow, um, the batch processing that we've done um, for some of our previous work. 
Um, but again, this is just the way that we're going to apply that classic segmentation workflow um, across the images. So we'll give the workflow name um, and the structure channel. So here we're actually going to go ahead and run that batch processing. Um, so we'll apply this classic segmentation across all of our images. We can go back into our folder and confirm that we do in fact have those outputs of that classic segmentation, which are here, and we'll take a look at those in a couple of minutes. In addition, um, we're going to apply the machine learning trained model um, to this data set as well. So again, here we're going to go in and we'll set up um, that YAML file for being able to apply the model to our data. So we're going to go ahead and copy over um, some of the patch size settings from the training that we did. So we'll just use the exact same parameters. So we'll copy those uh, over into the place where we're specifying uh, running that model. We're going to tell the YAML file where we want those outputs to get saved. Um, and then again, I just want to note, um, so here for the threshold value, we're going to use that 0.3 value that we said gave us a kind of reasonable uh, looking segmentation when we were looking at the Lamin outputs before. And then last, we're going to tell uh, the YAML file what input directory we want to use. And so again, we're going to use that kind of special data set for each field having a mitotic cell in it. So we'll go into the terminal, um, get that command typed in, specifying what YAML file to actually use. Once we finish running that, we can pull up the image and segmentation results to look at. We have the original image in the middle, and on the right, you can see our mitotic optimized image um, with the classic segmentation which looks significantly better than the segmentation on the left that we're getting from the machine learning that's been optimized for the interface cells. Now we're ready to start the merging curation. So the goal of merging the curator is that we're going to use the version um, of the segmentation on the left, so again that segmentation that works effectively on most interface cells, and we're going to use that as a starting point. But whenever there's a mitotic cell, we're going to roughly circle that region around the mitotic cell and then merge the version of the segmentation that we see in the right image, the classic segmentation that's been optimized for mitotic cells, to replace that part in the version on the left. Then those merged results will take advantage of both versions and can nicely serve as high quality training data. So to do that, we're going to start the merging curator um, by running again one of our commands from the command line. So you can find a lot more documentation about how to actually um, set up this curator merging command in our GitHub documentation. So we can start the merging curator like this. We're going to put in an input path, the index of the input channel, and then the segmentation version 1 and version 2. So the order that we put that in is important. Uh, version 1 will be used as a starting point, and then version 2 will be merged into those areas. Then the path to save the merging mask and also the exclusion mask. Also, similar to our previous curation, we want to use the CSV file to, to track the progress in case you want to pause and resume the curation. One more path is where we want to save the automatically generated training data after curation. The last thing is the normalization, similar to our sorting curation, where we're going to use index 10. Now we're ready to start the merging curation. So here you can see uh, what that looks like, and you've got some details about how to actually use um, this interface. But the most important thing is we're going to draw around mitotic cells in that upper left image. So this is, uh, we're drawing our merging mask. So again, left click um, to draw that, and right click to close the polygon. It's worth mentioning that we are only drawing a 2D mask, and this 2D mask will be duplicated and projected through every Z-slice to create a 3D mask. 
In this case, if part of one cell is slightly overlapping part of its neighbor cell, this kind of 3D mask won't provide accurate merging guidance. For example, in this small area, this mitotic cell is overlapping a little bit with its neighbor. In this case, we can use the exclusion mask to simply remove this small area from being used for training. By doing this, we can make sure the 2D mask will be sufficient for merging, even in 3D. Even though we're throwing away a little bit of data for training, this will make the annotation much easier than having to draw in 3D space. So next, we were asked if we need an exclusion mask, so we're going to choose yes. OK, we can circle out this small area. This circle does not need to be very accurate. We can simply circle a slightly larger region to be a bit more conservative. So here, again, we've got another image where we have a mitotic cell in the center of the image. So we're going to go and, again, draw that kind of rough polygon using left clicks uh, around where those mitotic cells are. And then we'll quickly scan the image to see if there's anything else. It looks like that's the only mitotic cell that we're able to pick up. And so for this image, we don't need to add an excluding mask. Everything in the segmentation looked pretty good. And so again, we'll go ahead and do that for as many places uh, as we need to. Uh, or once the curation step is done, we're now ready to go ahead and train another new model. So to do that, we're going to go back to our usual strategy of setting up a YAML file. Um, we're still going to use a unit, and then we're going to, again, continue to use those same kind of settings that we used in our initial training, but now we're going to save this model out as a second iteration. So one nice thing about this is that we don't have to start training the model from scratch. We're actually going to resume model training um, from that first model. So we're going to tell the YAML file that we want to uh, start training from the name of the final checkpoint of our previous model. And then we'll go through and again just kind of check some of these settings. These are all okay. And again, more details about all of these settings can be found um, on our GitHub page. Um, so one thing to note is that for this model, because we have some new training data, um, the patch per buffer is going to change. So now we have uh, 33 sets of data that we're going to feed into the model. So if we save one for validation, we need a number which is a multiple of 32. So we're gonna just go ahead and put in 256. And then now we're ready to go ahead and start the training. So we'll head back over to our terminal and use that um, YAML file as our specification for how to do that. And again, you may want to get this running at a time when you don't have to be at work waiting around for it to finish. So after we've waited, we can come back the next day and we can check and see that our model outputs are there. So that's great. So now we're ready to actually apply that model um, to some test images. So again, um, to do that application, we're going to go back to our YAML file the same way that we had done previously. So we're going to go in and edit that predict file. Um, so again, here we're going to use the outputs of the iteration 2 for the model. So we'll go in and make some changes for that. And then again, um, so we can go in and we can set this threshold value. This time we're going to use that 0.5 value that we know should work pretty well for most data. And then once we've got that file set up and configured the way that we want it, we can go in and we can run that prediction. We can run that model to generate segmentations um, of some of our test data. So we'll go ahead and run that command in the command line. And then that'll take hopefully just a few minutes to run on our data. But once we've got the output, outputs from that, we're going to be able to go in and take a look at what the result is and do some comparisons between the models. So in the upper left you can see the original data and then the result from the first classic segmentation workflow in the upper right and then the lower left is from our first deep learning model and then the largest image that you can see right now is the new results from our combined uh, mitotic and interphase models. And so that's going to be in the lower right. 
And so what I hope is really clear from being able to look at all of these images kind of side by side is that this classic or this iterative approach that we've taken using a combination of classic and deep learning approaches has really enabled us to get a segmentation that picks up effectively all of the nuclei in the image and two states uh, or multiple states of nuclei, both mitotic and interphase. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the Allen Cell Discussion Forum. Thanks for watching this tutorial.